Hi, it's JJ DiGeronimo, the president of Purposeful Woman and Tech Savvy Women. And today I'm here with Lisa Malice. Lisa does great work with many professionals and I'm thrilled to have her here today. Hey Lisa, tell us a little bit about the work that you're doing. Hey JJ, I am a time strategy visionary, which means that I work with mostly women who are in that I'm so busy stage and I help them regain control of their life. Woo, what a great topic. And for today, I know so many women that I talk to and you talk to are just out of time every day. They're so busy, their email just is nonstop, their phone's ringing off the hook. How do women handle all these distractions effectively? Yeah, that's a great question because we can't usually work in a bubble where we can get rid of all those distractions. So having a go-to strategy around how to handle them is really key. And so what I recommend to my clients is to use a parking lot. So a parking lot is just a piece of paper where as people come into your office or the phone rings or you get distractions, you jot all of those things down on a piece of paper so that you can stay focused on the task at hand. That is great advice. And then do you just jump right to that piece of paper and start working down as soon as you're finished with your current task? I, it depends. So I always laugh and say it's really not about time management. It's about choice management. It's all about the choices you make as you go throughout the day. And once you prioritize your list and you finish your first task and you go to your second, you need to determine, is any of this new stuff more important than the second? Or is it just the next shiny object? I love that. I think it's great. And I think it gives us permission to not jump right down that list right away and really stay focused on what we've tasked as the most important things to do that day. But the other thing I come across with women is, you know, they're in so much like, oh, I just I just need to do it. I, I'll do it. I'll get it done faster. Many women I come across have a really hard time delegating. Can you talk a little bit about some tricks and tips for delegation? Many people fall into that trap of, by the time I teach someone else to do this, I could just do it thinking after myself. Or, oh, I'd love to delegate, but I have no one to delegate to. And I think that's the key that makes many women work longer. Yeah. And I always say, work smarter, not harder. And delegating is a way to work smarter. Some women that will be listening have teams and, you know, they may or may not use them effectively. Others may be individual contributors. Can you give some tips for both sides? For people who have teams, one of the tips I think that's really helpful when you're delegating is figure out what really jazzes them mm -hmm. and what things they love. So when you start to go through your task list, you can match up what they love to do with tasks that you have. Yes. So what about the, the women that do not have a team to delegate to? Are there other people that they can call on? Absolutely. I love using virtual assistants. I have one, and she's a lifesaver. So I believe in, even if it's not work-related, personal-related. Wherever you can make your life a little bit easier makes for a better life. Yeah, that's so true. And I think some of it has to come down to trust, too. I find so many people that think they'll do a better job or they'll do it faster. And was there a process that you should do when you're starting to delegate or, or trying to get comfortable with delegating so that you can focus on the right things that need your attention? One of the things I always tell my clients is that when you think I could just do it better or quicker myself, that might be true for the first time you do that task. But if it's a task that is reoccurring and reoccurring and reoccurring, yeah. you hit the tipping point pretty quickly on when it's easier. So it's important to start small. You want to give them the support they need to be successful. The more successful they are, the more successful you are in the task is done how you want it to be done. So it's important to build in some checkpoints along the way. That way you can give them the support they need to move forward without looking over their back as they're working. I think it's great advice. And I think for so many women that are so busy, you know, really getting comfortable with things that smaller tasks and then building it up as they get more confident with, uh, with the individuals they're delegating to and not waiting until you have that mega project where you just realize you can't do it yourself. I think it's key to remember that as much rests on the shoulders of the person delegating as it does on the person who's being delegated to. So it's all about communication. Mm -hmm. Richard Maddox had five levels of delegation. Go 
ranging all the way from here's a task and I want you to tell me how you're doing each step of the way to the following end of here's a project. I'm assuming you know how to do it. You'll be able to handle it. And there's no need to check back with me to everything in between. So if you are on this different page, then it's just no wonder delegating can be so tough. Well, these are great. And I think many women and men listening today will get a lot of benefit from better handling some distractions that are probably happening right now to getting more confident uh, and giving themselves permission to delegate projects they have now and projects in the future. So thank you, Lisa, so much for joining us.